Given a binary tree, how can you write a program to return the level or the traversal of its node's values? That's today's video. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going through Leacle problem 102, binary tree level order traversal. Let's take a look at the problem first. Given a binary tree, return the level order traversal of its node's values. Just means meaning from left to right, level by level. That means from top to bottom, left to right. Let's take a look. Given this binary tree, 3, 9, 20, 15, 7. The level order traversal goes like this. 3, this is the first level, top level. Second level is 920, 920, another array list. And then 15, 7, this is the last level at the bottom one. So it has the last array list in the final output. We can simply use a Q. When it comes to level order traversal or BFS, breadth first search, it's pretty common that we turn to a Q, which has the FIFO order, first in, first out order. Let's take a look at this example. Given this example, how can we do level order traversal? First, we'll use the queue. In the very beginning, of course, we're going to check whether. First, we're given only access to the root node. We'll check whether the root node is now or not. If it's now, we'll just return an empty array list. But when it's not now, what we'll do is that we'll put the root node, this one, into the queue first. And then we'll make a note of the current queue size before we pull everything out of this queue. Why do we do that? Because when we iterate on every single node, we'll We'll check its left and right children. If it does have anything, we'll append its left and right children into the end of the queue. And that time, the size of the queue is going to change. It's going to increase, right? And when we pull the element, current element out of the head of the queue, the size of the queue will also change. But how can we know at what point should we stop? It's going to move on to the next level. We shouldn't iterate on anymore. Then we'll just make a variable called size of the queue. I just call it queue size here. In the very beginning, in the very beginning of the first level, the first one, the queue size is one because we only put the root node into this queue, right? Remember in here, in the final output, this one it has only one element, which is the root node. Okay, this is queue size. Next step. Then we'll initialize a new array list. We pull um, the current head node out of the queue, and then we initialize a new array list. For every level, we'll have to initialize a new array list and put this value into this list. Next step, we'll check this current node's left side and right side. Does it have any children? If it has any, we'll append its left children and right children, if it's not now, into the queue. 9, left, 20, right. We append them into the queue. Next, we'll break out of the current level. We're done. So we'll, we'll add this array list into the final list of array list, which is multiple levels, right? And then we're done with the first level. For the next level, what are we going to do? We just continue this while loop, which is first, again, we'll have a temp variable called queue size. Right now, the queue size is 9 and 20, so 2. Right, we're going through the second level from left to right, top to bottom. Right now, the queue size is two. Then we'll continue. We'll pull the, the nine out of the queue, right? And then we'll initialize a new array list, put the nine into this array list. Then we'll check if nine has left and right children. It doesn't have any in this case. And then we'll continue to pull 20 out, out of the queue. We'll put, then we'll put 20 into this array list. Then we check, does 20 have any left or right children? Yes, it does. Then we'll put 15, it's left child, seven, it's right child into the queue. Then we break out of this level. We finish iterating through the second level. Then we'll continue for the third level, which is this one, 15 and seven. First, again, we'll just repeat this process. This is a while loop, the same code being executing again and again. We here, we pull 15 and the head of the queue out of the queue. Well, then initialize the new array list, put 15 into the new array list. Okay, then check, does 15 have any left or right children? No, it doesn't have any, but good. And then we pull seven out of the queue. Does seven have anything? No, it doesn't have any left or right children. Then we put seven into the array list. 
Then we're done. We finally add the last array list, the last level, 15 and 7, into the final output. This is the final correct output. Time complexity of this program is going to be O n. n is the number of nodes, because anyway, we have to visit every single node exactly once. So that's why time complexity is O n. Space complexity is also O n. OK, with that understood, let's quickly put the idea into the actual code. Let's take a look. First, if root equals now, Actually, first we need to initialize an empty array list. Uh, we'll call it result new array list. Return result. If root is now, we'll just return an empty array list. Otherwise, we'll use a queue. Queue is going to be the type is tree node. Point queue. For simplicity, I'll just use the single letter Q here. And then we'll add this root node into the queue first. And then while we'll have a while loop to, to traverse through this FIFO queue. Queue is empty while it's not empty. And then we'll have a size, right? We'll have a queue size variable. Queue size. And then we'll have a for loop. Int i start from zero. I as long as i is smaller than size, we'll just keep pulling the the tree nodes out of the queue because that means everything, every node in current position is in the same level. Then we can simply pull and create a new list and add into the new list. They are at the same level. Now what we'll do is tree node current queue pull. We'll pull it out and then oh before we do that, we need to initialize in another array list we'll call it level new array list this is the array list that's going to help us hold all of the elements in the same level and then what we'll do is level add current value into this array list and then we'll check if current dot left is now or not if it's not now, then we'll just add it into the end of the queue, append it to the queue. Add into current dot left, current dot right, queue add current dot right. After this for loop, that means we have traversing through every single node that that are current at this correct level that we're iterating on. And then we can add this list into the final output, which is level. Is it called level? Yes, level. Okay, now we add it. And then in the end, we'll just return, return result. All right, this is the entire program. Now let's hit submit and see. Submit, it's running. All right, it's accepted. That's this, how we can use BFS to utilize a queue to help us do the level order traversal of a binary tree. If this video helps you to understand how binary tree level order traversal works, please do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Right now we're going through tree problems. After this, we'll go through dynamic programming and then sorting and searching and then different combinations of data structures and algorithms. It's going to be very interesting. I hope this will also help people better prepare for their upcoming coding interviews. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell notification so that each time when I publish a new video, you're not going to miss out on anything. That's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.